It's going to be one big pink party throughout May as Italy celebrates the 100th edition of the Giro d'Italia. And what an event it's going to be. And what a humdinger of a race. And we think it's going to be definitely a fitting start to the Grand Tour season. Yeah, it certainly will be. And that big party will all kick off on Friday the 5th of May with the first of three road stages on the island of Sardinia. They'll then have the first of three rest days before heading to the island of Sicily for a further two stages. And it's not till stage six where they finally reach the mainland, at which point they'll gradually head northwards up towards the Dolomites and ultimately have a final stage time trial into the city of Milan. Right, in total, the riders will be covering 3,572.2 kilometres over the 21 stages, which averages out at 170 kilometres per stage, which is pretty punchy, but a far cry from that first edition of the Giro, where the eight stages averaged 306 kilometres. Now, they did have between two and three rest days between each one, but nevertheless, that is mm. quite an undertaking. Unfortunately, even for this 100th edition, they couldn't quite visit all of Italy's regions. That was apparently a logistical impossibility. But nevertheless, take a look at that route, and that is a true Giro of Italy. Well, that was tasty. It was rather nice, yeah. I have to say. Mm. Uh, OK, so the 21 stages this year are spread across a total of 24 days. There are two individual time trials, six stages that are earmarked for the sprinters, uh, five stages in the high mountains, and then eight stages in what they deem the medium mountains, plus those aforementioned three rest days. Now, at the start, those three stages on Sardinia, there's something for almost everyone. Uh, stages one and three look set to be for the sprinters, while stage two is a much hillier affair and does give the attackers an early opportunity. Right, well, and this first mountain finish comes as soon as stage four. Mount Etna is the last climb of the day, and although it's 20 kilometres long, it is only an average gradient of 6%, so it's not going to be the toughest test the riders face. However, back in 2011, which was the last time this climb was used, it was plenty explosive enough for Alberto Contador, who put over a minute, did you get that? I did, yeah. Over a minute into his rivals on that stage. Well, Alberto Contador did put a fair bit of time into me on that climb yeah. as well, so I can testify it's pretty A minute difficult. on the lower slopes. Yeah, it? and it a true was. test of form then, isn't yeah, it? It really saw the men from the boys. Oh, this man. is not possible. You are not professional. You need training more. I was a professional 10 years ago. <laughs> but it's stage nine, I think, that needs to be definitely one to watch. It's, uh, it's nothing to write home about, the first part of the race, but the final climb is the blockhouse, which is a real brute. 13.6 kilometers in length, with the final 10Ks at 10%. And for me, I think stage nine is where we could see the first major GC shakeup. Yeah, I think you could be right there. Uh, following the second rest day of the race, the riders will face the first of the two individual time trials. It is a 40 kilometer rolling affair, and definitely one for the strongest riders against the clock to strut their stuff. And then on stage 12, we have the longest stage of the race. Certainly an endurance test at 229 kilometers, but one that again looks set to be earmarked for the sprinters. As ever though, it is going to be the final week which is going to be a true test, particularly when it comes to climbing. Stage 16 comes immediately after that final rest day and although there is no mountaintop finish, it has been deemed the queen stage. It certainly has the prize of the Chima Coffee, which is the highest point the Giro is going to reach and that is because it goes over the Stelvio Pass. Before that, though, it goes up the fearsome Mortarolo, and I can personally yeah, attest you remember that, that well, having twice. gone up it twice, yes, it is incredibly <laughs> steep, that one. But then it goes up the Stelvio again, this time for the first time ever, going up from the Swiss Richard. side, which is called the Umbride Pass, or something along those lines, thanks. And that, as well, goes up to 2,500 metres before a descent into the finish. After a slightly easier ride on stage 17, the next three stages continue through the mountains, with stage 18 taking in three major coals in the Alta Badia region, and the penultimate stage going up the infamous Monte Grappa climb, before the final TT showdown of 29 Ks in Milan. Now on paper, that looks like a brutal route, let yeah. alone on the tarmac, yeah. and I must admit, I just can't wait for it to start. No, it's going to be I a cracker. Wait for it to start. Be, I can't wait for Sante. it to start. Salute. Salute, sorry. Salute. Is it Sante? I don't know, it's all of the above. No idea. The Giro. Yeah, doesn't matter. Amore. <laughs> Thank you.
So, we know what are likely to be the decisive stages of the race, but who are going to be the contenders vying for the coveted pink jersey and that famous Giro d'Italia trophy? Well, before we get on with them, let's have a word for poor Fabio Ari. He was due to lead Team Astana at the 2017 Giro d'Italia, but just a few weeks back, he crashed in training through having a puncture and injured his knee and now won't be at the start, which is in his home place of Sardinia. How bad is that? It's well, devastating news for him and for the race as a whole. Oh, really? That's right, but don't worry, Italy is still going to have someone to cheer for because reigning Giro champion Vincenzo Nibali is taking to the start line and he is also going to have the honour of racing into his hometown as well. The Shark of Messina will be racing into Messina on stage five, although to be fair he's probably not going to have much of a chance of victory because that looks on paper at least like one for the sprinters. Hmm. But I think without a shadow of a doubt, the overall favourite has to be 2014 Giro d'Italia champion Nara Quintana yeah. of Mobistar. Now, we haven't exactly seen much of the Little Colombian this year so far, but what we have seen has been mightily impressive. Of the three stage races he started in 2017, he's won two, including Terreno Adriatico for a second time. And the steep climbs of Italy really do suit him so he has to be the out and out favour for this race and of course he'd be very fresh as well. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about that. Uh, the next man on our list almost won the Giro d'Italia last year. Most of you will remember that agonising crash for Stephen Kreisweig Ooh. whilst in the pink jersey on stage 19 last year. Firstly the pink jersey slipped out of his hands and then both remaining places on the podium as well. He eventually finished right. fourth overall. Now time hasn't run out for him just yet. He is only 29 years of age. Age. And although his form hasn't been phenomenal so far this year, at the same time last year, it also wasn't. So mm. don't count him out at all. No, that's right. And then also his compatriot, Tom de Moulin, is taking the star line again. And he is going to be, without shadow of a doubt, looking to tear things up on the time trial stages and then presumably limit his losses on the mountain stages. And then actually Dutch fans got an awful lot to cheer for because Trek Sega Freda's Balkan Monoma is also targeting this race. So that's pretty exciting. Maybe this should be like a Dutch corner. Yeah, move it across the border from France into Italy. Yeah, move over out the Duez. It's yeah, all about Dutch fans, Stelvio. get your act together. We might see you out there on Dutch corner in Italy. Yeah, yeah. the contenders just keep coming and coming. This. It's a stellar field, isn't it? I mean, French fans have got FDJ's Thibaut Pino, oh. who is on fire at the moment. Americans have got TJ Van Garen to cheer for, riding for BMC, who also have Rowan Dennis, who could be looking to do something, won the overall classification as well. Whilst British fans have Adam Yates look out for, and will, will he continue, continue his stellar progression that we've seen over the last yeah. couple of years? And another Brit that we can't ignore, of course, is a real informed Geraint Thomas of Team Sky, who looked very, very impressive and lean and sharp in the Tour of the Alps that you won overall. Yeah, he's a definite podium contender now, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, definitely. But let's not forget that he will share leadership duties at Team Sky with their Basque rider, Mikel Lander, who has actually finished on the podium with the Giro Italia before a couple of years ago in third place. And he's also shown some great form of late at the Tour of the Alps as well. Finished second on the stage there to Geraint himself. We should also mention Ilna Zakarin of Team Katusha. Not yep. the first person mm. that you think of for the GZ, but at the same time, you wouldn't be surprised to see him finish on the final podium. Oh, we should also mention Bob Jungels. He was the best young rider last year, sixth place overall. And the Luxembourg champion will be hoping to make another bit of progression this year. Yeah, he was brilliant to watch last well, year. Well, he had the jersey for a bit as well, didn't he? He did, didn't he? In fact, that's just an absolutely stellar lineup. It's nuts. Genuinely one of the most exciting Grand Tour GC lineups yep. that I can remember. Super cool. And although the sprinters perhaps don't have quite such strength in depth, we've still got plenty to get excited about. For example, Fernando Gaviria, who amazingly is doing his first ever Grand yeah. Tour. Really, really interested to see what he ends up coming up against. And then also fellow 22-year-old Caleb Ewan of Orica Scott. He is going to be lining up again. And then a less young rider, but certainly a prolific winner, Andre Greipel, is also going to be sprinting against those two. I think that uh, Greipel will win a stage. I think Gaviria will win too. Greipel's won a stage of every Giro start. He has. That's uh, not a bad... Uh, bad things to have in your pocket. It's not that hit, is it? And the Italians have Sasha Modolo and Elia Viviani, both of whom won stages in the past. They know what it takes to win a Giro stage. But also you look out for the Italian road champion Giacomo Nizzolo of Trek Sigafredo. Remember, he won the final stage last year, but was relegated 
for very yeah. his line. Poor so he man. will have a point to prove and is extremely fast. Yeah, he's also going to be fresh as well. He's coming back from injury, isn't he? Mm. Uh, Sam Bennett will be hoping to take a stage win for both Bora and Skrower and also Ireland. I think I'm right in saying the last stage win from an Irish rider is probably Stephen Rowe. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. Was yeah. something. Uh, for those fans to cheer on. And also, if you want a, a wild card to look out for in the sprints, look no further than young Ryan Gibbons, a 22-year-old South African riding for Team Dimension Data. And it looks like the team might well give him his first opportunity at a Grand Tour here at the Giro d'Italia. And at the start of this year, he looked tremendously fast at the Tour of Lankawi. He won a stage there and also won the overall. They better give him a start now, don't they? Otherwise, he's going to be really upset. Yeah. He yeah. watches this, thinks like, brilliant, I'm going to do this year. And just, then it's like, sorry, Ryan. You just blame the wind. Yeah, yeah. Dan's, Ex rider, of course. Dan's actually, yeah, Dan's yeah. actually yeah. not got any influence over our selection policies anymore. Right then, time for the infamous g -SIM predictions. Oh. I'm not um, settling for just putting the curse on three riders. I think oh. we're going to predict a podium each. So sorry to around about nine riders, depending <laughs> on who we all go for. Uh, first up, Sai. Mm. Winner? Nairo Quintana. Ah, the obvious choice. Yeah. Sorry, guys, but you know. It's fair enough, though. Yeah. Uh, he is good, isn't he? He is, probably, second only to Froome. The I best think, stage race rider in the yeah, world. I and think, therefore, you kind of got to predict him. I think no. his odds are very short for this race as well. Matt? I'm going to go for, it's not exactly an outsider, but Thibaut Pinot. Uh, I am going to go for young British rider Adam Yates, who you mentioned Ooh, earlier. Well, because, yeah. Because, as you said, his progression has been nothing short of incredible over the last few years. Fourth at the Tour last year. Mm. If he makes just the slightest of progressions again over the last nine and ten months, then he is definitely going to be on the podium in my eyes, if not taking And his time yeah. trialling's improved a little bit as well. Yeah, so, he wasn't no, bad at the time bet. trials last year. does look yeah. very, very strong. And you just can't help but think that he's going to be good on Italian climbs. Yeah. yeah. You know? Right then, podiums. Who's he going to be? Well, Pino first. Yeah. I'm going to go for Vincenzo Nibli, the defending champion, in second place. Yeah. And then I'm going to go for Steven Kreisweig really? in third. So a bit of a left field mix. Yeah. But it's such an unpredictable race, hence they I'm going for. All right, I'm going to go for really boring, really mainstream, and just keeping my fingers crossed that it's going to work out this time. So Quintana for the win, Mikel Lander, I think, for second. And then Vincenzo Nibali for third. Mm. So I'm keeping my fingers firmly crossed. Well, I am going for third spot with Mikel Lander. Oh. Runner up will be Tom Dumoulin. And the winner will be Nairo Quintana. Hey, mate, you've already predicted Adam Yates. I know, but I'm just going to get a fourth rider in here. <laughs> what? You can't do that. That's just cheating. Yes, I can. You can't do that. <laughs> I predict oh. Adam Yates for the win. And then I'm also going to predict Nairo Quintana yeah. for the win. So how yeah. many riders have we ruined the chances of now? That's pretty much all the contenders we've ruined their chances. Geraint Thomas, though, we haven't tipped him no. yet. So Geraint you know. for the win. Yeah. Oh, no, that's... No, you just cursed dance. him again. <laughs> Who is now? Zacharin, sorry, basically. Sorry, it's just going to be Zacharin for just the say, win. It could be a really good rider that wins the Giro this year. Yeah. Right, well, that is the end of Jason's big preview for the 100th edition of the Giro d'Italia. And I, for one, can't wait to see Same Adam Yates win. Seconded. That's going to be amazing. Well, anyway, what? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought Nara Quintana was going to win. Pino's going to roll it. Make your uh, mind you, up, Dan. You may have Pino seen Brigio. that we have all been pretty in pink throughout the show. These are yeah. Jason's special oh, yeah? edition Giro d'Italia t-shirts for 2017. And if you'd like one yourself, you will be able to find them over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And also there is the pizza cutter that you briefly saw at the start of the show. It's a GCN Park Tools collaboration. Uh, before we quickly devoured the pizza and took it out of shop. <laughs> Indeed, now me and Lasty are gonna be on the ground in Sardinia for the start of the Giro. So let us know the, the types of things you'd like to see in the comment section. That's right. So all there is left for me to say is make sure that you have subscribed to GCN. It's very simple, just click on the globe. And then if you want more content, well, we mentioned that amazing Matt and Contador video, so that one is just down there. And then to see the fearsome mortar roller and find out whether you go faster on compact or standard gearing, click just down there. Arriva Dirty. <laughs>